Okay, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Like we said, today is the second Sunday of the Holy 50 Days, and here is a summary of uh, all of the weeks after the feast. Um, we had Thomas Sunday, which was also a, a feast of the Lord last week, and here we, um, after that, we go through two important concepts, um, which is number one, resurrection, and number two, in, in Greek, the eskata, which is the, which is the end times, or focusing on the kingdom of heaven <clears throat> um, and eternity and leave it living with God forever. So um, the church, in her wisdom, gives us description similar to what we find in the end of the book of Revelation um, of what we see and what we experience and what we taste and how our relationship with God is so much um, more uh, uh, impacted and beautified and strengthened through the death and resurrection of our Savior. And so um, in any place you go um, uh, or when you travel to a certain destination, um, one of the most important things that you need to focus on or you prefer to focus on because it will not, uh, if it's not good, um, you, you will, it will be a reflection of your time there, um, which is the food. <laughs> and so um, uh, today the gospel is, should be familiar to us, um, the, the gospel according to St. John chapter 6, which has to do with uh, the Lord saying, I am the bread of life. And um, if you have been following the, the Sunday's schedule of the church, um, this gospel should be familiar to us by now, um, because more than once throughout the year, we read from this gospel. Um, so I won't go too much into depth, um, but we'll talk just what the bread is <laughs> and um, what kind of life is described uh, when Christ says, I am the living bread, or he, in another place, he says, I am the bread of life. Um, and in the Greek, um, it's, it's similar and it has multiple meanings. Um, but let's just... Uh, jump into it. In terms of the bread, um, this is similar, as you know, um, the bread is something we eat. It's, it gives us nourishment and strength. With it, we don't have any life. We need it on a regular basis. Um, and if we don't, we get hungry. Um, even if you have it, you still hunger for more. Um, same thing um, with God. And this is why we ask the Lord in the, the Lord's prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Um, and it pertains to the food of today, but more importantly, the food of heaven or the spiritual food. Um, and this is why in the gospel of today, that it starts with the Lord says, he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So here the idea is the hunger is satisfied by coming to God and believing in him. Um, that's just a couple of points, and we'll get to a few more in, in a second. And then he says, he who feeds on me will live because of me. Um, so this bread gives us nourishment, but it also gives us life. And St. Augustine um, writes, there was a hunger within me. When he talks about in his book of Confessions, he summarizes his story um, and his relationship with God. In the beginning, before he knew God very close um, or repented from his, his sins, he described it saying, I had a hunger within me from a lack of the inner food, um, unity with God, um, which is yourself, my God. Um, and that hunger drove him to search and to find and to see and to knock on the door and, and, and unite with God. Um, so uh, this hunger is in all of us. The question is, uh, what are we doing or, or how much are we seeking um, to get this need filled? Um, in the book of Proverbs, it says a satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb um, or hates the, the sweet food. Why? Because when you're full, you say, even if someone gives you the this best dessert or the tastiest delicacy, say, no, I can't, I, I'm full, <laughs> right? Um, 
And then it continues, but to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. When you're starving, I'll eat anything. I don't care of, of the taste. Um, and this proverb can be explained spiritually in two ways. Um, when we're filled with spiritual things, we don't need the things of the world. Um, or seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. And vice versa. Um, when we don't seek the heavenly things, we attempt to satisfy that need with the things of the world, um, with, with sin, um, which actually leads to more hunger. And this concept we will um, probably touch on, um, or the church reminds us of in the gospel of next week with, with his, the, the Christ's uh, discussion with the Samaritan woman. Um, <clears throat> so, and, and again, the opposite is true. When we're filled with the world, we, we don't, we, we loathe the honeycomb or the sweetness of, of being close to God. Um, but when we hunger for God, everything is nice. Everything spiritual, even if it's a bit painful, like, like fasting or long prayers or vigils, uh, staying up all night or uh, listening to a sermon by me <laughs> um, or, or someone who, who is, is not that talented, right? Um, everything tastes sweet because you are hungry for God, right? And this is what we have to try to um, keep this mentality. Um, simple example, um, we long for meat and dairy and just, you know, the, the smallest um, bit of non-fasting food when we're fasting for 55 days um, and anything would have been great. But now because we can eat whatever and however much, we're more picky um, because there's no limitations, right? Um, so we have to return to the simplicity of the little child who enjoys the crumbs that fall from um, the table uh, at the feet of their master. Um, uh, and this is what it says in, in the, the gospel, the Lord Christ says in uh, the gospel according to St. Matthew, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. We have to um, be like Mary, the sister of Lazarus, who knew the thing, the one thing that was needful. We have to be like St. John the Beloved, who wanted to lean his head on the Lord's shoulders or his, his to be close to him. Um, we won't need to be like the disciples of St. Anthony, who just needed to see the face of the one who was close to Christ. Um, we need to be like St. Beshoi, who enjoyed washing the feet of the Lord, um, even delaying his opportunity to see the Lord and prioritized serving the one who was in need. And it turned out the one who was in need was the Lord himself. Uh, as he's, the Lord said, when you do these things to the, the least of these, my brethren, you do them to me. Um, so this is the, the one who is hungry uh, for God. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is just a nice quote from um, St. Theophilus when he describes, of course, when we say the bread of life, the, the best example uh, that we give is um, the Holy Communion, the Holy Body and Precious Blood of our Savior. Um, and so St. Theophilus says, O oh, awesome mystery or sacrament, O oh, inexpressible economy or the way that God deals with us. Um, here's not talking about the economy of the nation, but uh, the, the loving kindness of God for him to humble himself to be uh, so close to us. Oh, incomprehensible condescension. Um, oh, unsearchable kindness. The creator offers himself to the creature for his enjoyment. God offers to us himself for our pleasure and for our unity and for our salvation. This is um, the most precious thing that we have here on earth. Life itself bestows himself, because Christ is life, on mortals. So we have death reigning in our mortal, in our bodies, but when Christ bestows himself upon us, he gives us life. Um, life itself bestows himself on mortals for their food and drink. Um, can't say it any better than, than this quote. Um, and the, so when we talk about the bread of life, there's different ways we can understand this life. Um, I, I don't want to get too philosophical, but 
when, when we say bread gives us, so the first example is bread. Bread gives us life and nourishment to sustain us so that we don't die and we could live longer, right? That's one way that God gives us nourishment, but that's not the only way when he says, I am the bread of life. The second example is when um, he resuscitates us or when we are dead walking in darkness and in the shadow of death because all sin leads to death and we can't go one day unfortunately without sin but when christ comes to us and when we are uh, abiding in him and he in us he resurrects us from that death so that's the second way that he is the bread of life um i i can ask uh, answer any questions um after if, if this is not clear enough the third way that the bread of life gives us life is he get, grants to us eternity. And Christ says it best in the gospel of today when, where he says, everyone who says the, sees the son and believes in him, he's talking about himself, may have everlasting life. Um, and I will raise him up at the last day. He, he, he repeats this phrase, I will raise him up at the last day several times, which, which describes the second resurrection, or going to heaven at the end of the world, right? Um, I am the living bread, same, this word living bread, same thing when he says the bread of life. I am the living bread because he is alive and he gives life, which came down from heaven because he took flesh. If Just like the manna in the wilderness, right? The manna in the wilderness in the Old Testament fell from heaven, from God, um, and it was used to help sustain them because without it, they would have died um, in 40, the 40 years that they were Ill in the wilderness. Um, and if anyone ate of it, they lived, but they didn't live forever, right? But he says, if anyone eats of this bread, which is his flesh um, in the Holy Communion, he will live forever. So taking communion does not only give us forgiveness of sins, but it gives, it opens the door of eternity to us. Um, I know, unfortunately, right now we can't uh, take communion, and we've spoken about this before, but uh, this is just something we have to remind ourselves of, of the greatness of, of what we are just missing out for a temporary uh, point of time in our life. Um, and this is good to contemplate on, you know, whenever unfortunately, whenever we feel far from God or we, we feel like there is a lack and we pray and we struggle and we wait, um, whatever we attain after that is, is precious in our eyes. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity for us just to remind ourselves of how great the, the divine liturgy is and the Holy Communion is. And maybe we were not taking en enough seriously enough um, uh, but I know we already spoke about this, but I think more importantly is when we do start, God willing, in the near future, to start coming back to church, to start taking communion, we don't fall back into the same um, mistake as in the past as uh, taking this great blessing for granted. Um, so not only do we have salvation, and forgiveness and remission of sins, but we have eternal life. Um, as you know, at the end of the liturgy, the priest proclaims given for us for salvation, remission of sins, and eternal life to those who partake of him. Um, so, um, in the, so as you know, during the Holy 50 Days, the number one um, author of scripture that we refer to, like the number one um, uh, person who wrote um, one of the bi books of the Bible, or actually five of the books of the Holy Bible that we read in the Divine Liturgies, because, you know, we read Pauline Epistle, Catholic Epistle, um, the Book of Acts, and the Gospel. So almost all of the Gospels, not all of them, but most of them, we take in the Holy 50 Days from the Gospel according to St. John. And a lot of, also, of the Catholic Epistles, we take from St. John as well. Um, and this is intentional. Um, but look at the uh, Catholic epistle of today, um, where St. John uh, says, God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. 
he who has the son has life. This is the same thing of when the Lord says, if you eat my body and drink my blood, you will live forever. Um, he who does not have the son of God, the opposite, does not have life. Um, and we're talking about eternity. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. We have to know and be confident that we have eternal life in our grasp by the grace of God. Um, since the day of our baptism and chrismation and re renewed uh, often with partaking of the Holy Communion in, in, uh, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So our part is to have faith and to have acknowledgement and assurance that we have the Son of God. Um, even if we haven't taken communion for so many days, or, that, that still doesn't um, limit our relationship with our Savior uh, too much. <laughs> of course, yes, it, as we have taught in the past, it is important for us um, to take communion on a regular basis as best as we can. But now since it's not offered to us uh, every day, um, we, that, that shouldn't um, limit our relationship with him. Um, St. Cyril of Alexandria, the pillar of faith, he says, because of Adam's disobedience, our bodies became subject to corruption and death. So anyone who is a human being uh, is subject to death, right? He says, however, because Christ is inside us with his body through communion, we will undoubtedly rise in perfection. So this is what um, he says in John 6 about when you eat his body and drink his blood, you will live forever, right? You have eternal life and I'll raise him up at the last day, all of these things. For it is impossible that the life does not raise those whom it dwells in. It's not possible if Christ is light and, he ha and, and we carry him in ourselves that we are also not full of light. Um, and similarly, if he is life, light does not dwell with darkness. Life does not dwell with death. Um, so it's impossible if we're taking this life in, our, in ourselves that we don't have eternity. Um, this is what St. Cyril is uh, describing. Um, <clears throat> so we have to have this boldness and this confidence. Um, one um, Greek Orthodox priest, um, he wrote about the mysteries and, and the sacraments. Um, <clears throat> and he, he writes this. Um, the mysteries prepare the faithful for, sorry, uh, for the future life, but they also make that life real, here and now. So when Christ is the bread of life and he gives us eternity, he also, we also experience that now. Um, we are given the vision and have the foretaste of the things to come through them. So we see and perceive and understand what will await us, but, they introduce us continuously and in various ways to the transforming power of God, which communicates salvation. So when we say, um, I am saved, or I will be saved. Um, and I think we mentioned this before, like the concept of salvation, for example. Some people say, I was saved on day so-and-so when I believed in God, or even when I was baptized. So yes, that's true. And, but we say salvation is a process, it happens, um, on the day of the cross, right? It happened on the day that we were baptized, and it will happen, God willing, on the day that we enter paradise and heaven with our Savior. But it also is happening now um, because God is continuing or continuously has the power to transform us um, through his grace and especially the sacraments. Um, so the same thing we say about eternal life. Um, Eternal life was open to us on the day in heaven, of course, on the day um, that Christ was crucified because he said, um, today you will be with me in paradise, right? And um, that door hopefully will be open to us on the day of our departure, but we have continuous uh, interaction with paradise now. Okay, um, <clears throat> sorry, I don't want to go uh, too far into uh, the, the deep here. Um, but he says, through these mysteries, through these sacraments, we encounter Christ in order to be like him. Um, 
And I think this is, is a nice summary of the past, present, and future. What happened on the cross and the resurrection um, a couple thousand years ago, and what will happen and what is happening now, it's, it's one um, strand. They're all connected. Um, okay, just a couple more, more slides and we'll finish. Uh, St. Ephraim the Syrian, he says, we have eaten Christ's body in place of the fruit of the tree on paradise. So he's comparing what Adam and Eve experienced um, and, and what we're experiencing now. He says, we have eaten Christ's body in place of the fruit of the tree of paradise. In his altar has taken place of the garden of Eden for us. So Adam and Eve ate in the garden. They walked with God. Um, they were uh, in full dominion uh, and authority over the things in the garden and the animals and, and such. Um, and we also have this food for us. We have dominion over sin, over death, over evil through his grace and through what he has done for us in the flesh. Um, and the curse has been washed away by his innocent blood, right, on the cross. And in the hope of the resurrection, we already walk in this new life. Um, so he's saying, we already are walking in the resurrection. That's why um, during the Holy 50 days, some people say, yeah, I'm a sinner. Um, how can I experience resurrection? It's like, this is, it's a process. Um, but we have to walk in this new life. And that's why we say Christosanisti. That's why we dress in white. That's why we do a procession um, saying Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death. Um, and that's why on Sundays, for example, the early church said, um, uh, you can't have late liturgies. Um, you, you, there, you, there's no abstention from food in the fasting. Um, yes, if we're uh, like during the Great Lent or whatnot, we have an early liturgy, but we still eat the fasting food. Um, you can't, you don't do the prostrations or the matanias um, out of um, repentance. Um, yes, we repent every day, but this is the reflection that Christ is risen and we're walking in this new life. Even though we're weak and we stumble, but we get up. Um, <clears throat> and so this is, this is the spirit of why these days, are, in my opinion, are so precious um, because it's, it's like every day is a Sunday. These 50 days, every day is as if we're experiencing the resurrection again. Um, <clears throat> because this is the cornerstone of our faith and it gives us the power. This is, this is the bread that we need to, rem to remember every day that Christ is risen. And that's why every day in the first um, hour of the Gveya, we remember Christ is risen. And then throughout the day, we stumble and we sin. And so at the end of the day, we remember, even though Christ is risen, I'm still a sinner. Um, and I've still had made many mistakes that I need him to forgive me from. Um, and hopefully he, he will have mercy on my weakness so that on that day, um, I will be accepted. And then the next morning, we repeat the cycle. So this is the beauty of, of how the church has organized um, uh, the understanding for us to remind us of the grace of God and also the weakness and, and limitation of humanity. Okay, um, last slide. Uh, I think I shared this quote before, but it was very pertinent. Uh, His Grace um, uh, Bishop Ioannis of Blessed Memory, he, he was again describing the Israelites in the wilderness and the bread of life. He said the Israelites were fed with manna in the wilderness until they entered the promised land, right? Um, and they had to cross the sea first, right? Um, so does the Holy Communion feed our souls and protect us in the world until we reach the heavenly Jerusalem. So kind of like, um, uh, here's the symbolism. So the Israelites um, were the people of God, but they were in the land of slavery. So we are the people of God. We're in, in a sense, the land of slavery in the world because the devil is the ruler of the world, um, right? And, but we cross the, the Red Sea. We are baptized into Christ, right? Um, and then we dwell in the wilderness for 40 years eating manna. So here we're dwelling in this world for uh, everyone is a little bit different, 20, 40, 100 years, right? Um, for a period of time being sustained on the communion, right? Be being sustained 
um, and we're crossing through the waters of baptism, being sustained in the church. Um, everywhere around us is wilderness, but we are being fed by God, right? Um, so the Holy Communion feeds our souls and protects us in this world until we reach the promised land, until we reach the heavenly uh, Jerusalem. <clears throat> so uh, those are just some points on, on the gospel of today and, and how it kind of relates to our daily life with the risen Christ. Um, hopefully this encourages us to have a newfound uh, respect and desire for the, for the mysteries, um, which also means we, ha we need maybe to have a special preparation every, um, uh, every day, especially the day that we take the, the communion and after we take uh, the communion. Um, may the God uh, give us this grace and blessing uh, forever. And glory be to him now for them to each other. Just a minute. Um, do we have any questions?